Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. So today, uh, we are again not in the church, and um, it is not a, a, it, is a, it, it is a sad thing. Um, it is an unfortunate thing that we are in this situation. Um, and as I mentioned last week, you know, we, we lament this. And, you know, one of the things that um, I, I read this morning is, uh, it's from, um, it, it, it's, uh, it, from the Egyptian history, the Coptic Orthodox Church, Church history. I'm not sure the, the historicity of this, but what it says is that um, the, the, um, the caliphate at the time had shut the doors of the church, and he wanted to stop the Christians from worshiping. And uh, what, 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 what happened was, um, you know, on that Sunday, the next Sunday morning after he shut the doors of the church, um, the, that he walked around the streets and he heard every home singing the songs of the church. And then the next Sunday he opened the church doors and said, I tried to shut the doors of the church, but those doors were opened in each home. And so it's a calling for us to become the church. We are the church. We are called to be the church. And if, if, if we cannot meet in that physical space, our homes, our hearts become the church. This, this, every place that we are becomes a place of worship, the place of where we are called to, to, to come and draw close to God. And so one of the things that I'm so thankful that God uh, has given us is, uh, given me was the ability to, uh, to, to give this talk on qualities of the church. And, and you know, um, it is important for us to know what makes up the church, what makes up our, 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 our community. And so um, I think it's very important that we, we spend time understanding what is the qualities of the church, what are the characteristics of the church, what makes up the church, what makes the church different than any other organization, any other group, any other uh, club, what is it that makes the church the church? And so we have talked for now uh, four weeks already. We talked about one of the qualities of the church being to be forgiving. That, that because God is forgiving, because God is merciful, then we are called to be forgiving and merciful. And that is whatever the qualities of, of, of God are, the qualities of, are the, of the church is supposed to be. Because we are called to be what? A reflection, a reflection of God, a reflection of Jesus Christ. And so when, when, when God is forgiving, we are called to be forgiving. And at the same time, we remember the second week we talked about how God is comforting and consoling. What is comforting and consoling? Uh, what is consolation? Uh, the comfort received by a person after a loss or disappointment, a person or thing providing comfort to a person who has suffered. The church is called to be like God who comes to us in our suffering and stands and, and, and is with us. We are called to be comforting and consoling. And God I, I, is honestly with us at this moment. Qualities of the church. Another, the third, last Sunday, uh, we actually, we talked about to be a prayer warrior. That, that one of the, the, the qualities of the church that we saw that Christ often did, Christ would go off and do what? Christ would go off and pray. He would, he would leave his disciples and some, sometimes he would take a couple of them with him. But even on the night of his passion, he took Three disciples with him, and he, took, he took, uh, and he went to the garden of Gethsemane. What did he do? He prayed. He prayed. And that's what we are called to do. If our God prays, and he shows us that that is the way that we're called to be, we're called to be prayer warriors as well. So today, what is the topic that we are going to cover? The thing is, I think it's very important that we realize that one of the important qualities of the church is to be a transformer. Now, um, for those who aren't seeing, there's an image of uh, 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 of a transformer. Uh, if you remember the '80s show, um, and it was popularized again, and in, in, you know, in recent years with the movies. Um, but it, the it was a cartoon that I grew up with, uh, and uh, uh, the cartoon of of, of these these um, these machines that transform into cars and then back into 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 like robots and things like that. And, uh, and, and, you know, they were one thing, but then they were something else at the same time. And the thing is, if you heard today's epistle reading, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Pauline epistle, one of the, my favorite verses and one that has changed my life is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is good and acceptable before and, and perfect will of God. So what Paul, St. Paul is t- teaching us is do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's putting two different things there. We have the, the, the fact of the world conforming us versus what? Versus being transformed by what? The renewing of our mind. Who renews our mind? And that's what we're going to talk about. How the qualities of the church, one of the the important qualities of the church is to be a transformer because of what? What we hear today in today's gospel. Today's gospel is actually really interesting. Um, And and, and with a lectionary reading for our church. You know, um, in case you didn't know, uh, you know, the, the Orthodox Church has a lectionary. There are specific readings for every day. Well, actually, for, for every Sunday. And then during Lent, uh, we have specific readings for every day. So, you know, if, if you're not doing it at the moment, I encourage you, look up Indian Orthodox Lectionary on, your, uh, on, on, on any browser, on Google, on whatever you use to search, um, and, uh, and type in Indian Orthodox Lectionary, and you'll be able to find the lectionary for our church. And you can find the specific day for today or for tomorrow or for Tuesday or Wednesday. And you can read all those readings. And they have such, uh, it's a good way for us to, 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 to grow in our faith by reading uh, the, the, the passages that the church has, has deemed valuable for each day. Um, and today, our gospel reading was from Luke chapter 13, verse 11 and 13. Uh, well, actually, it was a little more, but it was from Luke chapter 13. And it was on uh, the bent woman or the crippled woman. And the, the thing is, um, the song that was sung, the post-communion song, was actually had a lot more to do with another uh, 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 passage, Luke chapter 10, which is the parable of the Good Samaritan. And the thing is, um, last night, if you if you read if you were with us last night for our uh, evening prayer line, we had um, uh, I read this Luke chapter 10, the parable of the Good Samaritan, because that was the reading for Saturday night. And so um, these two stories. In today, in, in, in our worship, are very important um, for today, for this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Great Lent. So we both fo- we focus both on the story of the Good Samaritan from Luke chapter 10, as well as the story of uh, the, the bent woman, or the crippled woman, from Luke chapter 13. And what are these two stories about? These two stories are about transformation. They're about seeing something that is not exactly what it should be, and transforming it into what it should be. Luke chapter 10, we hear, uh, thir- verse 33 to 34, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, what did he see? As he, if you remember the parable, he saw that there was a man who was beaten and robbed and left for dead on the street, on the road, on the way. And what happens is, is that uh, the, the, the Samaritan, who is... Um, you know, one who, 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 who you know, the, the people of Israel thought was um, not a great person. Uh, they were prejudiced against the Samaritans. But this Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, walked by, and what did he see? He saw a man who looked like he was dead. He saw a man who looked like he was dead, and what did he do? He went to him, he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an end, and took care of him. And that man was healed. Luke chapter 13, we see a story of a bent woman. Behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. She was ill. For how long? For 18 years. She was bent over, and she could not, she could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called to her and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately She was made straight and glorified God. These two stories show us one thing, a story of transformation. That our God, uh, that Jesus Christ, that the the, the certain Samaritan who who was representative of Christ, that when they see something that the rest of us see and say, it's broken, it's damaged, it's garbage, throw it out. When they see a dead man, they say, let's walk by it's not our concern. When they see a woman who is bent over and who is unable to pick herself up, they don't even look at her. They, their eyes go off to someone else. They go off to see something uh, uh, that is more beautiful. 
that they think is more beautiful. But what God sees is that he sees the beauty in the man who's beaten on the ground and sees that that man is his creation. He sees the woman who is bent over, who is of no, uh, uh, not, probably not of great um, uh, stature or status, and he sees her and he says, you are wo loosed from your infirmity. He takes his time to go to her rather than go to anyone else. Not to go to any of the, the rich people, any of the leaders, any of the, the people, that, that the, the movers and the shakers. He goes to the person and he, who, who doesn't seem as if they are anything. God takes what is broken in order to heal and transform. In orthodoxy, salvation means not simply changing God's attitude. We do ask over and over again in our prayers. Lord have mercy. That is the essence of our prayers. Yes, I don't de deny that. That we continue to prostrate ourselves and say, God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. But the thing is, our prayers are not only about changing God's attitude, it is changing ourselves and being changed by God. Because when I do the kumbhre, and when I say kuri elayson, it is not only that I am asking God for His mercy, but I am asking God to change us, myself, to change me. Salvation ultimately means deification. If for us to be saved, we need to be transformed. Transformed into the image and likeness of God to come into and be the reflection of Jesus Christ. We pray for God to transform us, to change us, to mold us, to make us Him. We all know, and uh, I, you know, is the favorite of, uh, of, of, of old timers, myself included, uh, of this passage that was. I think spoken about so it's so so often spoke about by uh, by seniors. I remember um, uh, so many uh, prayer meetings of when I was younger, uh, hearing this passage of Isaiah chapter sixty four, and it is um, yet, O Lord, you are our our Father. We are the clay. You are the Potter, and we are the work of your hand. That remembrance that what God is the Potter, and what does the Potter do? The Potter puts the clay and and molds it, makes it shapes it, God takes the clay that is dirt, that is, that, is, that, is, that is just of the ground, and he takes it, and what does he do with it? He makes a masterpiece from it. He takes the thing that, 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 that we walk on, and he, 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 he takes it in his hand, and he molds it, and shapes it, and transforms it. And when he transforms it, it becomes beautiful. And this is the thing for us. That we are called to be transformed. A transformed humanity. See, when God created, God created Adam. And when he created Adam, he, 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 he made him, he shaped him, he molded him, he, he formed him, he breathed life into him. And, and he told Adam, Adam, follow me. And Adam was supposed to be doing what? Adam was supposed to be following God's command and doing what God called him to do. But what ends up happening what ends up happening is that Adam doesn't follow God's instruction. He goes off and teaches it himself. Makes a mistake. And Adam, who was being shaped and molded and made into this beautiful and wonderful creation, well, became damaged. He became broken. And the only way to fix Adam, to fix humanity, was for God to become us. Awesome. And so God put on our flesh and he molded us and makes us. He heals us. He redeems us. He saves us. He transforms us. And he calls us to be like him. God takes Adam, the broken, and gives us Jesus, the perfect. And he calls us to make that same transition. How does he call us to make that transition? The process of transformation, two steps. Coming to God in repentance and asking God, God, I can't do it myself. 
I can't be perfect. I can't I can't do what what everything that is needed. I I I I I know I need you. Asking God then to be the potter, to be the one that shapes the clay, to transform us. That's the first step. The second step is to be ready to transform. Transform the situation that we are in. See, for us to be transformers, we need to be transformed. Let me say that again. For us to be transformers, we need to be transformed. God needs to work on us and transform us in order for us to transform others. It starts with us. Our uh, um, uh, Mahatma Gandhi uh, is, is famously quoted as saying, be the change that you want to see in the world. And it's not a biblical or church father quote, but it is true. Be the change that you want to see in the world. The change starts with us. This world is in need now more than ever of salvation. And Christ brings it. And he calls us to reflect that salvation in ourselves, in our hearts, in our homes, in the people that we meet, in the situations that we're in. So regardless if you are sitting at home and working from home, or you're going out into the medical field and working or doing the essential services that, that are called by uh, in this current situation, we are called to transform it. And the only way we're going to transform it, and the only way that we're going to move from despair and, 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 and uh, sadness and, 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 you know, and depression and, and, and feeling as if, you know, what are we going to do? And, and feeling overwhelmed by the news media and what's going on and feeling overwhelmed by, you know, uh, the, the potentials for, for, for disaster and epidemic and pandemic and all these things. The only way we're going to transform is if we allow God to uh, allow ourselves to say, God, I need you. I need you to transform me. We come to God and say, Kuri so Lord, have mercy, not only for you to have mercy on me, but for you to mold me and make me. So be ready to transform. To transform yourself, transform the situation. We are called to be the light in this world. We are called to look upon our brothers and sisters who are out there and see that they are God's creation. That, that, that the image and likeness is within them. We are called to be the hope of the situation. So when, 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 when if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're uh, in the medical staff, even if you're just going to the grocery store, look upon those who are the, out there and not, don't see them as someone who is uh, uh, full of sickness and, and who can hurt you. Um, you see them as God sees them. See them as God sees us. As the one he loves, he died for us. He calls us to himself, to follow him, to carry his cross, to transform ourselves, to mold and make us into the beautiful image that he calls us to be. And then to do that and shower that and reflect that and show that same mercy, love and kindness and joy and peace and comfort to those around us, to the situation. Let us be the beacons of light and hope in this world. St. John Chrysostom says, Happiness can only be achieved by looking inward and learning to enjoy whatever life has, and this requires transforming greed into gratitude. If there's one thing that this current situation has hopefully teached us, is to have gratitude for what we have. Being stuck at home for the kids, I will tell you, it might be very, very upsetting, you might be losing out on a lot of fun experiences. But realize this, that one of the greatest aesthetic and, and uh, practices of the church is that the forefathers of our church went into silence during the time of Great Lent. They went into caves and they went into small places and they spent with themselves praying. They spent by themselves worshiping. They spent by themselves being transformed by God. Let us take this opportunity. Though we are not able to go to the church, let us not stop being the church. Let us pray in our homes. Let us pray every day. If you're saying, Achin, I really want Kurbana. Achin, I really want to go to the church. I say, yes, of course, I do too. But at this situation, pray in your homes. Pray every day. 
read the, 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 the Bible readings, the passages of, of, the, of, of the lectionary. Read and, and study and, 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 and tra- allow God to transform you. That you might transform this situation from despair into gratitude, love, peace, and joy. To be the hope in a world that needs it. Let us transform the situation. Let us remember God that transforms us. All glory and honor to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.